Hi, this is Lady T, the business coach for moms, motivational speaker, and co-author of the book, Mom Entrepreneur Extraordinaire. You know, a lot of people ask about my day. How does my day work? How does it work when you're homeschooling five children and you are running a home-based business? Well, first of all, I'm no longer homeschooling five children, so woo! I am homeschooling the last three. I have a long way to go because the last three are only four, five, and eight. So I wanted to give you a an in to my day and how my day goes. Well, first of all, this is probably not the day to talk about my day because this was not the typical day. However, there is no such thing as a typical day. You know this, your parents. Well, when you're at home with your children all day and they all have their own agendas and their own personalities, there is no typical day. Every day is new. Every day brings us new challenges and new things. But I can tell you what my day is supposed to look like. I can tell you what it looked like today. No, well, actually, I probably shouldn't tell you about today because today wasn't a good day. We're just finishing a whole day of homeschooling. And um, yeah, it wasn't a good day. Yesterday was wonderful. Yesterday was wonderful. But today, yeah, that wasn't, wasn't too good. As a matter of fact, I'm so exhausted. I just want to sit down with a big bag of chips and just eat. And eat. You know, it used to be PMS that caused me to want to eat chips, and now it's the kids. But I'm not going to mess up my wonderful little healthy thing that I have going on by eating chips. I'm not going to do it. I'm going to just remain calm and just go with the flow. But anyhow, let me go back. I usually go to bed about 2 o'clock in the morning, and I set the alarm to go off at 6. I don't know why I do that, because I don't even wake up until quarter to seven <laughs> but uh, I said to go off at six every single night it's just really crazy I'm functioning about quarter to seven where I'm in the kitchen I'm getting my herbal tea I'm making my fruit smoothie or doing a boiled egg and toast well I'm trying to get some nourishment in myself I'm powering up with my vitamins and my uh, bee pollen I'm doing all of that just to get ready for those kids about eight o'clock I wake everyone up and they come into the kitchen they have to make sure that they are they have done their chores which is make your beds straighten up your room and the eight-year-old is responsible for putting the load in the wash the five-year-old he's responsible for making sure the bathroom counter is clean uh, bringing out any of the dirty clothes that's in the hamper and put them in the laundry room the four-year-old is my only girl and she's a little princess she doesn't want to do any chores right now so yeah, if she doesn't want to work, she doesn't have to. Yeah. Once they're finished with their chores, we're at the kitchen table and they are eating their breakfast. For the little girl, she eats only yogurt. And I'm glad she's out of her stage of eating yogurt and pineapples and toilet paper because she went through that stage way too long. And now she's just down to her yogurt. So yeah, good for her. I usually make, the, make it for them, but I do want them to learn how to cook. And so they make toast. Um, they make hash browns, which you know, little frozen hash browns you put in the oven. Um, so they can do their own breakfast. I'm right there in the kitchen. And then we're sitting down to eat. I read, first of all, the Bible. We talk, have some discussion about the Bible. Today, what do we read about today? Oh, yeah. Um, we talked about and read about the uh, book of Revelations, chapter 4, verse 11, which we did a little song and a dance to it. And the fact that they were created for God's pleasure. And then I'll read a book to them. We just finished reading Pippi Longstocking in the South Seas. It was a great book. They love Pippi, especially my little girl. She wants hair like Pippi Longstocking. Then they have a few minutes to go out and do what they want. Usually they're outside playing basketball or in this case they're all into tennis right now. They're, they've been watching this video, The Prince of Tennis, and uh, so they're totally into tennis. And so they go out, they play tennis for a little while, they run around, climb trees, whatever they choose to do. And I'm glad that they go out. And so I have to call everyone back in. And right now we are using the bullhorn and the tambourine. School time! Come and get the schooling! Yes, it's very annoying, but they absolutely love it. Anything that's loud, the boys love. And so they come running in and we gather here in the schoolroom. And so from here, we'll go and we'll separate. The fourth grader, the eight-year-old, um, has some lessons that he's supposed to do. And so he'll 
get on the computer, find out what his lessons are. Some of them have been printed out for him already and so he gathers his books. I'll have him do a couple of things by himself while I teach the five-year-old and four-year-old and then I'll work with them and then we'll switch up. And so all throughout the day, I'm trying to determine what can you do by yourself and what can I do with them? And so we've kind of switched back and forth. And they're learning now that um, they have to be patient and wait each other out. Last year, oh my gosh. Woo! You know how they are when they're three and he was four. And there was no such thing as I'm going to wait until the other child is done. You know, they just, they all want your attention. And so as they get older, things get easier. Today wasn't easy at all. Yesterday was. I should have recorded yesterday. It was beautiful. The children were beautiful. We danced. We laughed. We went outside and did a quick science lesson. We came back in. I was able to get the eight, the five, and the four-year-old all together to learn a couple of lessons together. Yesterday was wonderful. We were finished at 1.30. Yes! Today, however... Oh my gosh. It went on forever. Forever. And they whine and they complain. And it's the little girl. It's the little girl. It's the little girl. You know what? Ladies, watch yourself. Because I can see. It's the... Yeah. So today the discussion was... Um, we were talking about the continents. They're learning the seven continents. And um, they had to color the continents. And then after that, they're going to cut them out. And then put them to pieces and glue them onto a little globe and all of that. Well, she wanted to color all of her continents pink. Because pink is her favorite color, of course. And um, the five-year-old little boy told her and tried to explain to her with all his wisdom, because he's five and she's only four, you know, that the continents are supposed to be different shades of brown and beige. And the, the water, the water is supposed to be blue and white because white is where it, it fuzzes up and it gets really fuzzy because the water is coming in whew, and so that's supposed to be white and blue and the that's supposed to be that's that's less land that's land land is not pink Tati and her response to that was yeah it is it can be whatever color I want it to be because mommy said that I can be whatever I want to be and that really frustrated him to the point where he just burst out into tears because he just couldn't understand pink continents. And she can, Mommy, can I be whatever I want to be? Didn't you tell me that? I said, yes, I did, sweetie. Yes, I did tell you that you can be whatever you want to be. Be whatever you want to be. Which really got him frustrated because he likes for me to be on his side when he... And so I reminded him that he could be whatever he wanted to be, too. He could be brown and beige continents if that's what he wanted to be. Yes, and so, you know, you have to work that out with them. You have to work things out with them, you know. Yeah. Okay, so today was a challenge because the eight-year-old loves to read. He loves to draw. He loves to do anything that he's doing. He loves to do it. No, I'm not talking about just want to do it. I mean, loves to do it. Not that there's anything wrong with that. That's the reason. That's the power and point of homeschooling. I wanted to raise children who loved learning, who, who could just indulge themselves in their, their pleasures, in their own natural gifts and talents. And so that's the point of homeschooling. But you know what? You can't read during school hours. Yeah, you can't do that. No reading during school hours, young man. Put that book away. Yeah, you just can't do that. Why? Because... He would do it for six, seven, eight hours. He was supposed to read his assignment and I, I walked away. We read the assignment together. Um, I explained the, the instructions and then I walked away and he snuck his book out and he started reading his book. So when I come back in 20 minutes later, he hides his book and pretends like he's working, which would have worked except his paper was blank. There was nothing there. Chocolate, chocolate. And we did that several times, several times, several times. And so he's frustrated. And I was a little frustrated. It took longer to do what we were supposed to do. And it stretched the school day out to 3.30. So I'm not going to do it. So I'm not going to do it. 
And so what I've been doing in the past is putting a crock pot meal on early in the morning. Today I didn't get a chance to do that. So once we finish school at 3.30, then, you know, it's like, okay, now I have to cook the meal instead of sticking it in a crock pot. So that took up another hour and a half, which we have karate at 5 o'clock, and then Boy Scouts at 7 o'clock. And it meant that we had to go out and buy some fast foods, which I don't like doing. Yeah, no eating of the fast food crap. It's just, just not good for you. Don't do that, no. And so once we got in, it was after 9, we finished up the chores, the, you know, fold the clothes, to straighten up the kitchen, to clean up this, the that, and then everyone's off to their room. Now the rule is, you don't have to go to bed, but you do have to go to your room. And so they're all off in their rooms about 10, 10, 30, and they all know that if you come out of your room, the lights are going out. So I can hear them back there in the room, no, Tati, no, don't go out there, mommy's gonna make us go to bed. I want to see my mommy. I have to ask her a question. And, you know, they back and forth. Don't come out the room. So they'll come into my office or they walk past and go past me to go talk to daddy and just back and forth. And so that leaves me sitting down in my office at around 11 o'clock or so to work on my business. I just pray that I'm alert and awake and can focus. <laughs> <laughs> and not get caught up on Facebook and not have to answer too many emails and I can do some things that I want to want to do. I mean I have a speaking engagement coming up and you know 11 o'clock at night is not the best time to sit around and try to plan out what you're gonna talk about. Yeah that's not a good thing. Yeah, that's not a good thing young lady. And so that's an example of one of my days. A typical non-typical day. That's how we roll over here. Today was very challenging. Yesterday was beautiful. Who knows what tomorrow may bring. I'm so excited, can't wait. Woo! <laughs> this has been Lady Tina, business coach for moms, reminding you that an empowered mom affects generations.